anti-terror police raid another two houses in Gloucester. It follows the discovery of explosives at the home of a suspected Al-Qaeda member. Secret recordings. The Soham jury hears Maxine Carr talk about lying with Ian Huntley. No to the Good Friday Agreement. Ian Paisley's DUP still lead in day two of counting. And acquitted three paparazzi photographers who took pictures when Princess Diana died. Hello, this is BBC News 24 with Matthew Amroliwala and Gwenan Edwards. A victory parade for champions, a nation honours its rugby heroes. Hundreds of thousands of fans were on the streets to share England's triumph. The royal seal of approval, tea at the palace with Her Majesty for the World Cup winning team. America expresses concerns about the fairness of the Russian election. First it was the public, then it was the Queen tonight. It's the turn of the politicians to fate the players. Downing Street has been playing host to England's World Cup heroes. Also tonight, watch those festive spirits. Drink drivers are warned, everyone could be one too many. Good evening, it's nine o'clock. The headlines here on BBC News 24. A teenager is charged with murdering Rhys Jones last August. Police paid tribute to the courage of Rhys's parents. I would personally like to thank Stephen and Melanie Jones for their support and patience throughout this investigation. Hope for those struggling to secure a loan or a mortgage as the Bank of England prepares a plan to kick-start lending. A stern rebuke for Robert Mugabe. Gordon Brown accuses the Zimbabwean president of stealing the election. No one thinks, having seen the results at polling stations, that President Mugabe has won this election. A stolen election would not be a democratic election at all. Shannon's mother accused of child neglect. Karen Matthews will stand trial alongside the man accused of abducting her daughter. Also coming up, happy birthday, Holy Father. Happy birthday to you. The President and Laura Bush celebrate with Pope Benedict on his first official visit to the White House. And another starring role for Rugby World Cup hero Martin Johnson as he is named England manager. Good evening, this is BBC News. The headlines at seven o'clock. The suicide bomber's last message to his baby daughter in a video played to a jury today. Look, I absolutely love you to bits. And you've been the happiest thing in my life. On the march, teachers staged their first all-out strike in England and Wales in two decades. The death of disabled 22-year-old James Hughes. Reports say one of the men suspected of murdering him is his mother's partner. BBC learns that hospital operations are being cancelled because of broken, missing or dirty surgical instruments. Also coming up in the next hour, playing the bad guy, the film star Wesley Snipes could be handed a jail sentence for tax evasion. And cool. from Hertfordshire to Hollywood, a bluffer's guide to blagging yourself a role in a movie. This is BBC News. I'm Anita McVeigh. The headlines at seven. A deal on press regulation by the Conservatives, Labour and the Liberal Democrats. All three leaders claim the credit. Everyone has accepted my argument for a royal charter. What we've agreed is essentially the royal charter that Nick Clegg and I published on Friday. It's very much on the basis, almost exactly on the basis of what I'd hoped when I published my own, uh, my own proposals along with Ed Miliband last Friday. 
But there's no agreement on whether the new framework is underpinned by law. We'll have the latest from Westminster. The other main stories on BBC News at 7. Anger in Cyprus over plans for a tax on savings. Banks are shut until Thursday amid fears over deposits. Mairead Philpott in the dock. She denies starting the fire that killed her six children. I'll be reporting live from Baghdad. Ten years after the American-led invasion of Iraq, I'll be asking what's changed in a decade. Very good with animals. Hello, little <laughs> and Frank Thornton, who starred as Captain Peacock in Are You Being Served, dies at 92. Hello, a very good evening to you and welcome to BBC News. Hello, good evening. This is BBC News with me, Ben Brown. Our headlines at 8 o'clock. Plan ahead for Christmas, says a shipping boss amid delays at the UK's ports. A shortage of HGV drivers means around 50,000 containers are still waiting to be collected at Felixstowe, the UK's biggest commercial port. Retailers are warning it will have a knock-on effect on their shelves. We'll still have toys to sell, but if you're looking for choice, don't expect to come in in December and see what you would normally um, experience in a toy store. The European Union sets out its plans to try to resolve disagreements over post-Brexit trading arrangements in Northern Ireland. Two more casualties of the global spike in gas prices. Pure Planet and Colorado Energy have ended trading. And Star Trek's William Shatner, at the age of 90, makes history as the oldest person to go into space for a 10-minute journey in Jeff Bezos' capsule. What you have given me is the most profound experience I can imagine. And coming up, protesters are dragged away by angry motorists in Essex today as they continue to block roads. Good evening. Hello, this is BBC News. I'm Celia Hatton. Our top stories. Switzerland's largest bank, UBS, is taking over its struggling rival, Credit Suisse, in an emergency measure designed to protect the Swiss economy. In this difficult situation, the takeover of Credit Suisse by UBS is the best solution for restoring the confidence that has been lacking in financial markets recently. And Ukraine condemns Vladimir Putin's visit to Mariupol, a devastated city which was captured by Russian forces. Hello, you're with BBC News, live from London. A historic day as Finland is to become the 31st member of NATO, a decision prompted by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Former US President Donald Trump is in New York to face criminal charges in court. TikTok is fined over £12 million for failing to protect the privacy of children in the UK. Hello and a very warm welcome. I'm Marianne Mashiri.